Notion just released a brand new database feature. You can now add buttons inside of databases. It's pretty exciting. And in this video, I'll be showing you how the new database button property works. And I'll be showing you the most useful use cases. Let's get started. So here is an example database that I set up. So this is just a task list. As you can see, we have the name of the task here and I have a status property here. And here we have the brand new Notion button feature that you can add inside of databases. So the button that I've set up inside this database is a complete button. So all it does is when I click the complete button, it will change the status automatically for me to done. And it will also automatically input the completed date. So it will just input whatever today's date is, which is really, really handy. So I'll start by showing you how I've set up this button. And then I'll be showing you a few other use cases as well that are really, really handy. So firstly, what I'm going to do is just delete this button here and let's add it again from scratch. So the main thing that you need to ensure is that you have a status property like this one with various different statuses. And you'll also need a date property. This one I've just labeled as completed date. So to add a button property, you'll simply click on the plus symbol here and I'm just going to type in button and you'll now see this new button type here. So that's the one I'm going to select. You can name this whatever you like. I'm just going to call mine complete. Now, if you're already familiar with Notion buttons, then you'll already know how this works. This is the exact same system that is used for the normal buttons. These are just inside of databases now. So there are a few extra features. So the first thing to know is that whatever you name this property is going to appear on every single one of the buttons. But if you actually want the button to be labeled as something different, different to the overall property then you can add a label here. So let's say I want this to be done instead of complete. As you can see, it's updated that to done. But in this case, I'm just going to leave it as complete. So if I just leave this blank, it will automatically just pull through the name of the property as the name of the button, which is really handy. Next, if we scroll down, we can add our action. So when the button is clicked, this is what we want it to do. So I'm going to click on add an action. And as I said, if you're familiar with Notion buttons already, then you've probably seen these options before. But if not, I'll go through each one. So you can either add a page to. So this means if you click the button, you can add a page to either this database or you can actually add it to a different database. You can edit pages in. So again, this works with either the current database so you can edit certain pages within this database or you can edit pages in a different database. You can show a confirmation. So that just shows a confirmation on the screen after you've clicked the button. So it might say, are you sure you want to do this or something like that? Or you can open a page. So that's pretty simple. It's just you click the button and it will open a page. So for our complete button, we actually want to just change the status property on the pages within this database. So I'm going to click edit pages in. Next, it will ask you to select the database. So you can select any database within your Notion workspace. But one thing to note is that if you select a database, let's say I select my tasks database, when you click the button, it will change every single page within that database. So say I clicked the complete button, it would change the status of every task within the database to done, which is not what we want. So in this case, I'm actually going to select this page instead. So instead of selecting the database here, we're going to click this page and that's telling the button that I only want you to amend the current page that this button is linked to. So for example, if I clicked this complete button here, it would only change this walk dog page and not any of the other tasks. So that's the one we're going to select. And next it'll ask me if I want to edit a property. So if I click on here, it will simply just pull through all of the properties from our task database. So in this case, I want to change the status. So I'm going to select that and you can then choose what you want to change the status to. So in this case, I want to change it to done because if the task is complete, therefore the status should be done. And we also want to update the completed date property to input today's date. So I'm going to click on edit another property and we're going to select completed date. And one really handy feature is if you click on here, it will allow you to either pick a specific date or you can just pull through the today date. So it will automatically pull through whatever the date is on the day that you click the button. So I'm going to select today and that is all we're going to do. So I'm simply just going to click the X here and here is our button. So let's do it for this one, which currently has a status of not started and the completed date is currently empty. So if I click our complete button, as you can see, the status has been changed to done and our completed date has been added. I also briefly did set up a board view. So it's the exact same database. It's just a board view. So you can actually add the buttons also onto here. So to do that, we're going to click on the three dots, select properties. And here is our new button property. So I'm just going to click this symbol here to unhide it. It's going to be added onto our card. So this is just really handy because normally if you wanted to move things between different statuses, you'd have to drag them like this. But instead, I can actually just click on our complete button and it will automatically move to one of the different columns, which is really handy as well. So here we have our second example. So this, as 
as you can see, is a projects database. So in this example, we're saying that you're a company that runs different projects. So here are the names of the projects. And I also have a tags property here just with some tags related to the project. Now, a lot of the time projects need to get approved. So we have a status property here with various different options, either not started in review in progress or approved. Now, a great way to approve projects would be to simply have an approve button like this. And once you click that button, it will automatically change the status to approved. It will also input the approved on date in this column, and it will also pull through who approved the project as well. So if I click this button, as you can see, it's updated the status and it's filled in these two properties for me. And a really cool feature is that it will pull through whatever today's date is, and it will also be able to pull through exactly who clicked the button. So if someone else clicked this button, it will bring up their name in this column, but as I clicked it, it's bringing up my name. So that's really, really handy. So now I'm going to show you how to add an approve button like this that will actually update three different properties. So firstly, I'm just going to delete our approve button so that we can rebuild it from scratch. So once again, we're going to click on the plus symbol here and I'm just going to type in button and we're going to select the button property. This one I'm just going to name approve and then I'm just going to scroll down and click on add an action. Now, the first thing that we want the button to do is to change the status to approve. So I'm going to edit pages in because again, we're not wanting to add any new pages to a database. We simply just want to edit the pages already in this database. We're going to click on select database. And similarly to the last example, I'm going to select this page rather than the specific database, because if you select the specific database, once you click this button, it will edit every single page within the database. So it would approve every single project, which wouldn't be a good idea. So in this case, once again, we're going to select this page. So it only updates whichever page I've clicked the button for. We're going to edit a property. And the first one we're going to edit is our status property. So again, this is similar to the first example. We're just going to change the status to approved because you've clicked the approve button. So the status should now be approved. We're then going to edit another property and this time it's going to be the approved on. So this is the date that the project has been approved on. So again, similar to the last example, we're just going to select today. So whichever day it is when I click that button, that is the day that will be populated in that column. And finally, we're going to edit another property and it's going to be the approved by. Now the approved by property is actually a person property. So you want to make sure that's set up before you add this button. And these are the options that it's going to give. So you can actually select a few different things here, but the one we're going to go with is a replace with. So whatever is in there is going to be replaced with, and then we're going to select. Now you can select a specific person or you can select the person who clicked the button, which is the one we're going to go with. So therefore, whoever clicks this button, their name will appear here in the approved by column. So that's everything thing we're going to do. So I'm simply just going to click the X here and that's our button all now set up. So if I now click the approve button for this one, as you can see, it's now updated all of these properties. So I've just changed a couple of these back to review because there is one more amendment that we can make to this button to make it even more useful. Now, approving a project is quite an important thing. You don't want to be clicking the approve button by mistake and approving a project that you didn't mean to. So we can also add a confirmation to a button. So it'll essentially just ask you, are you sure you want to do this? So what we're going to do is click on here, click edit property. And if we just scroll down all the way to the bottom after all of the steps that we've already added, it will ask me here if I want to add another step. So I'm going to select that and we're actually going to click this show confirmation option. Now, when you click this, it will have an automatic confirmation message. Are you sure you want to continue? So you can either keep this message or edit it. So I'm actually going to change it to, are you sure you want to approve this project? is just a bit more relevant. You'll then see a continue button. So you can also change the name of the button. I'm just going to leave it as continue. And there's also a cancel button that says cancel on it. So you can change what it displays on the two buttons. But for this example, I think continue and cancel work fine. So that's all we're going to do. Again, click on this little X. So now if we click this approve button, and as you can see, it's bringing up this confirmation. So it's asking me, are you sure you want to approve the project? So I can either click continue or cancel. So I'm just going to click continue and it has now approved the project. Now, as I mentioned earlier, we can also have buttons that actually add pages to different databases. So as you can see here, we have two different databases. So this is the same projects database I just showed you in the previous example, but I've actually changed it into a board view. So you can see the different projects grouped together based on their current status. And I've actually added two different buttons onto each card. So we had the approve button, which is the one that I just showed you how to set up. And now I've also added this add task button. So if I click this button, I can actually add a task to this task database database and it will automatically be related to the project that I've clicked the button on. So let's give this a go. So let's just say for this local library website, I want to add a new task. So I'm just going to click add task. That's then going to open up a page and I can input the name of the task here. So let's just say that I need to talk to the client. And as you can see here, I've already set up a relation between these two databases. So it's actually relating this task automatically to the local library website project. 
So I don't need to do anything else. This has already been filled out for me. So I can simply just close off the page. And if we now have a look here in the tasks database, as you can see that task that I've just added, it has automatically been added to this database, even though I haven't touched this database at all. I've simply just clicked the add task button up here. So I'm going to show you now how we can add a button like this. So I'm actually just going to go back to the table view because it's a little bit easier to work with. So that's the one that we were just working with. So again, I'm going to click on the plus symbol. We're going to add another button property. And this one, I'm simply just going to call add task. So as I said earlier, whatever you put as the name of the property, it's going to add onto the button. But if you want to give it a different name, then you can use this label function here. I'm going to scroll down and we're going to click on add an action. And in this case, we're going to click add page two because we actually want to add a page into the tasks database and we're not editing anything in this current database. So we're going to click add page two. It's going to ask me which database I want to add a page to. So we're going to select the tasks database, which is this one. Now it's going to ask me what I want the name of the page to be. In this case, we're going to leave this as untitled because that's going to be the name of the task. So I'm not going to know what the name is until I actually add the task. So we're going to leave this blank. We can fill it in later, but we are going to edit one other property. So I'm going to click edit another property and we're going to select the project relation. So as I mentioned earlier, I set up a relation property between the two databases so that you could relate the tasks to the actual project that they relate to. So that's what this is. So if I click on here, I can select what I want this to relate to. So you'll see all of the different pages within our projects database, but I actually just want to relate it to this page. So whichever page I've clicked the button on, that's the one I want it to be related to. So as an example, if I click add task next to our health tracker app, I therefore want the task to be related to the health tracker app. So if you select the this page option, it will do that automatically for you. Now, the last thing we need to do is open the page. So once you click the add tasks button, you're going to want the page for that task to open up. So you can actually input the name of the task. So we do need to add that on here. So I'm going to click add another step and we're going to click open page. It's going to ask me which page I want to open. And luckily you can open the new page that has been added. So that's the option we're going to select. So the new page that has been created because I've clicked this button is going to now open up so I can input the name of the task. And you can also select how it's going to show up. So I'm going to go with a side peek. So it just takes up half of the room and that's all we need to do. So I'm going to click on the X symbol. So here is our button. Now I'm actually going to add this button onto the board view that I set up earlier. So it's the exact same database, but I've just set up a board view of that database. And to add the button onto our cards, we're going to simply click on the three dots, select properties. And if you have a look here, we now see our add task button. So I'm just going to unhide it. So it's here now on our card. So let's say that I want to add another task for our health tracker app. So I'm simply going to click the add task button. This side peak is now going to pop open and I can simply just input the name of the task. So let's just say that I need to set project budget. And again, as you can see, the project has automatically been added for us. So we don't have to do anything at all. So I'm just going to close off the page. And if we have a look in our project tasks database, as you can see, that project has now appeared here for us. So it's a really, really handy system. And the final use case that I want to share with you today is this upvote system, which is actually my favorite use case. So in this example, I've just set up a destinations database. So let's just say that I'm planning a trip with my friends and we're trying to decide where we want to visit. So we can all add our destination ID ideas into this database. And in this column, it will say who the idea has been suggested by as I'm the only person in this Notion workspace, I have suggested all of the ideas. And then I've set up this upvote button. So if I click on the upvote button, so let's just say that I want to go to Sri Lanka, I'm going to click upvote. And as you can see, a vote has been added into this upvoted by column and the number of upvotes has gone to one. Now this database has actually been sorted. So I've added a sort based on the number of upvotes. So therefore, whichever one has the highest number of upvotes will appear at the top. So it's a really fun way to to decide which destination we should go to. Obviously, there are a lot more use cases for an upvote system. It would work really well in teams and businesses as well, but this is just a fun little idea that I came up with. So I'm going to show you how we can set up an upvote button like this, and I'll also show you how to set up this counting system so that it will automatically count how many votes each one has. Okay, so I'm going to start by just deleting our upvote button and our number of upvotes so that I can show you from scratch how to build it. So the main thing that you're going to need to make this work is this upvoted by property. So this is simply a person property. So if you just click the plus symbol and type in person and just add this person property, that's all you need to do and just give it the name of upvoted by. And now we can actually add our button. So I'm going to click on the plus symbol. We're going to add a new button and this one I'm just going to call upvote. And again, that name has now been added onto all of the buttons. 
So we're going to add an action and this one again is going to be an edit pages in action because I actually want to just edit the pages that we already have in this database. I don't want to add anything new to the database. So then going to ask me to select the database. Again, we're just going to use the this page option here because I only want to add an upvote for whichever page I've selected the button on. And it's going to ask me to edit a property. So the one we're going to select is the upvoted by property because I want to be able to add my upvote to that column if I've clicked the button. And instead of replace with, we actually want to change it to add because if someone else has already upvoted it, I want to add my name. I don't want to replace their name with my name else it's always just going to be one vote. It needs to add my name to the list so that there can be multiple votes. And we want to then select who is going to be added. So if I click on here, you can again either select a specific person, but in this case, we just want to add whoever clicked the button. So whoever clicks the button, their name is going to be added to the upvoted by column. And that's all we need to do. So I'm just going to click the X. So now if we just have a look at the button, if I click on the upvote button, as you can see, it simply adds my name in here. And then if someone else came to the page and clicked the upvote, it would also add their name next to my name. So there would be multiple upvotes. The next thing we need to do is create a system that is going to count how many upvotes each option has. So we're actually going to use a formula property to do that. So I'm going to click on the plus symbol, type in formula. And this one, I'm simply just going to call number of upvotes because that's what it's going to count. And then we're going to click on the formula edit button to bring up the panel and we can actually type in our formula in here. Now the formula is actually really, really simple. We're firstly just going to add in our upvoted by property. So if you have a look here in the sidebar, it's going to show you all of the different properties within the database. So you just want to click on the upvoted by property and it's going to add it in like this. And then all we need to do is simply just type dot length and then an open and closed parentheses like this. And what this function does, it simply just counts how many votes are in our upvoted column. So if I just click done, as you can see, it's now counting. So there are a couple here that have one vote. So as you can see, it's displaying one. So if someone else added their name, it would then display two and so on. Now I actually only have one Notion account, so I can't show you what it would look like with multiple ones, but I will just put a screenshot on the screen now of what that looks like. And the final thing that we need to do is just sort this database based on the number of upvotes. So I'm just going to simply add a sort and we're going to select the number of upvotes and we're going to set it to number of upvotes is descending. So it goes from the largest number to the lowest. So as you can see, the destinations with the most upvotes are now showing at the top of the list. So that's really, really handy. And that's it. That's all you need to know about Notion's new button property. You can check out all of my pre-made Notion templates over on my store, including this super advanced second brain template. I'll leave a link in the description box below. And if you did find this video useful, then I'd really appreciate if you could give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel as I upload new Notion tutorials every week.